Good. Everyone's it's Monday. Yeah. All right. All good. Well, good morning. Uh, this morning we've got a, a very significant announcement in terms of SAPOL here in South Australia. Uh, this government has had a long-standing commitment to make sure that SAPOL is one of the most modern, well-equipped police forces in the country. And today we're announcing a $780,000 contract is being awarded to NEC for facial, rec facial recognition technology. Um, the nature of policing is constantly changing. Uh, the sort of challenges that face the South Australian Police Force, as is the case with every police force around the country, is becoming incredibly more complex, constantly evolving, and the types of crimes that have been committed um, in the community require our police force to be ever vigilant. So it's important that governments uh, make sure they're resourcing police forces to the extent that we're giving our police force all the tools they could possibly have to be able to keep our community safe. And this government has, I think, an outstanding record and a very strong commitment to making sure that the South Australian Police Force is one of the most modern, well-equipped, uh, technologically advanced police forces in the nation, which of course makes the task of policing ever easier and means our community is a lot safer. Uh, the, safe facial, sorry, the facial uh, recognition uh, technology investment is a $780,000 investment. Uh, this commitment uh, honours a state election uh, commitment that we made to make sure that facial rec recognition technology will be introduced in South Australia. Uh, South Australia will be an, a leader uh, in the national context. We will be one of the first jurisdictions in the country to provide our police force with this type of technology, which makes their task a lot easier to catching criminals uh, quickly and expeditiously. Um, NEC has been awarded the contract, and I congratulate NEC. NEC is known as being one of the fastest, most advanced uh, provider of these services anywhere in the world. And critically, the NEC is known as being the most accurate provider of facial recognition technology. And accuracy is obviously incredibly important to police when applying this type of resource. Um, Again, this is the state government honouring an election commitment to make sure that SAPOL is a national leader when it comes to having facial recognition technology, which will mean a safer community. I'll invite um, Chris Court to say a few words from, a few words from NEC. We've also got a superintendent here uh, from the Information Technology Division who can answer any technical questions you may have. So I might hand over to Chris from NEC to say a few words, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions that people may have. Chris. Thank you, Minister. Um, NEC works around the world in its public services and safe cities capabilities, and biometrics is one of the services under, the, under that banner. Um, NEC has worked with police agencies in the US, in Asia, in the UK, and I'm really pleased to say that in Australia, NEC is starting to work with local state-based police agencies more and more, and also federal agencies, especially CrimTrack. And I can, I'm very proud to say as a South Australian that the South Australian Police Force is one of the leaders in this country using biometrics technologies to combat crime, and uh, looking forward to working closely uh, with the community here to resolve those issues. Thank you. All right, any questions? Sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, they've had extraordinary results um, from uh, CCTV uh, images that they've captured uh, through to uh, enhanced investigations, even historical investigations. They have very, very, very good results. I haven't got any stats with me at this point. Um, they've been going through a proof of concept and a trial, uh, but uh, their results uh, were lessons that we learnt before we actually embarked on this procurement effort. So our initial th process is through investigation and will be managed through our investigation, uh, sorry, our intelligence areas uh, for investigational purposes. So um, let's say we have a stolen vehicle that drives through a fast food outlet. Um, typically uh, those fast food outlets are uh, videotaped or um, they've got CCTV vision through them, we can capture that CCTV vision, provide still shots or run small uh, snippets of that CCTV 
and we can match that uh, or use that through the technology, uh, through the NEC facial recognition technology, to try and get a match. Uh, I can actually answer that. It's a very good um, technology when it comes to that part of it. Chris, you might want to add some more to this, but um, it has got the ability of, uh, of um, rendering uh, and making uh, dark shots, um, distorted shots and so forth a lot more crisper so that we get a better matching profile uh, in, the, in the actual uh, software. Yeah. No, look, I think um, you know, any complaint in regards to bullying within a workplace is something to be concerned about. I think what's important from a government policy perspective is that we make sure that we've got systems in place so that where there are complaints, uh, those complainants can have their concerns heard by an independent organisation. And in, in this instance, uh, any complaints that exist about bullying within the MFS, they can be raised with either the State Ombudsman or in turn through the South Australian Employment Tribunal, particularly if it's a, a workers' compensation related issue. I've got to say, though, by and large, uh, my experience um, and knowledge of the MFS is that this is an incredibly good place to work. Um, there are in excess of a thousand people working within within the MFS, but over the last decade, there's only been 10 people uh, that have resigned. It's got a 95% staff retention rate, so we have a lot of people who want to work in the MFS, and when they start working within the MFS, they tend to stick around for their entirety of their career, which I think speaks volumes about the culture that does exist within the MFS and the fact that. Most people working there do enjoy the privilege that it is to serve our community uh, working in the Metropolitan Fire Service. Given that, are they uh, trying to um, move off from their old members to try and freshen up the workforce? No, look, the MFS has got a range of roles that exist within it to be able to accommodate people of different age demographics. They're constantly recruiting new people. Um, MFS senior management are constantly working to make sure that they've got the right staffing capabilities across uh, the workforce. And I haven't had any evidence drawn to my attention um, of people being deliberately moved on um, as a result of age. There is no time limit of working with the MFS. Um, naturally, every employer, every large employer has got challenges they need to deal with. I guess from my concern at a government, at a ministerial level, is to make sure that there isn't a, a, a crisis of culture with the MFS, and I don't think there's any evidence to suggest that that's the case. Okay, that's a capability that exists um, that we don't currently have access to. Uh, currently we're going through a trial phase um, with it progressively being rolled out uh, throughout the latter part of this year. But right now there isn't any intention or plan to have it um, accessing real-time uh, CCD footage, although that capability does exist into the future. Well, not at all. I mean, CCTV footage is a really useful tool for our police footage uh, forces to be able to capture people. Um, and all we're doing is taking existing CCTV footage that is under investigation and then providing the police with an enhanced tool, which will mean more expeditious and accurate catching of criminals, which only means our community can be safer. Any more questions? Thank you very much for coming out.